proudly we hail. begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the officers and the men of the United States Army Anti-Aircraft Command. Our story today is titled the Sky Sweepers, and it's the story of Sergeant Kenneth Walker, a member of the anti-aircraft artillery forces that guarded the skies over America's cities, and of a blonde model who made a choice between the success she always dreamed of and the man she loved. Our first act curtain in just one moment. Plan ahead to get ahead. Now that's sound advice for you, you high school graduates. And here's how you can act on that advice. Your United States Army is offering a bright future in such interesting technical fields as radio, radar, electronics, mechanics, photography, and many, many others. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. Or perhaps you're not qualified in any of these urgently needed skills. Well, I got the answer to that one. Your Army, through its Reserve for You training program, will train you in the course of your choice. And you pick your own training course before you enlist. How's that, huh? Great opportunity. Your opportunity to plan ahead, to get ahead. So for full information, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Ask all about the Reserve for You training program. Remember, there's no obligation. And now the first act curtain of the proudly we hailed production, The Sky Sweepers. Average day. An average of 30 unknown or unidentified aircraft show up on the big plexiglass map deep inside the Combat Operations Center of Continental Air Defense at Colorado Springs. When they do, Conat swings into action. Unidentified Canadian charter flight is off course, and Conad goes back to its never-ending vigils. And so it goes, day after day. But what happens if the aircraft is unfriendly? What happens if it strikes at one of our cities or a defense target? That's where the job of the Anti-Aircraft Command begins. The Army Anti-Aircraft Command, with its guided missiles, high-altitude artillery, rapid-fire cannons, and deadly machine guns. It forms the final barrier that any attacker from the skies must cross. The final barrier between a peaceful, sleeping city and the attack that signals a war has begun. That's why the gun crews and missile units are on their toes. That's why the training never stops. Fire! Fire! You're a gun sergeant in charge of a crew manning a skysweeper, a twin-mounted automatic radar-controlled pair of 75-millimeter cannons that can spot and knock out an enemy aircraft flying at supersonic speed. Your gun is part of the battery that guards the skies over Florida. Prepare to fire! You're on the firing range today, Ken Walker. An Atlantic beach that stretches empty and white in the brilliant sunshine. All around you, gun crews are tense, waiting for the commands that will send them again into action as a smooth and deadly team. Then finally, you hear the Texas voice of your buddy, Sergeant Ed Evans, as he calls to the battery commander, Arcat, please try it, sir. Try it. An Arcat, a radio-controlled aircraft target, towing a target sleeve at high speed, 
somewhere up in that bright sunshine. You turn to your gun crew, Ken Walker. All right. Stand by. You wait as the moments tick fast slowly. Then the order comes. Fire! 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 morning, Ken Walker. You and your buddy Ed Evans are standing before Battery Headquarters looking at the bulletin board. When Ed says... Hey, how about that? I told you B-Battery would walk off with it. Uh, we sure did. Best score on the annual practice year, as far as I can see. Davy Crockett couldn't attract that our cat any better, my boy. Great jumping horn, Toads. Do you know what this means? Uh, sure, we're hot shots. Every other battery will be gunning for our mark the next time around. That's in the future, old friend. I'm talking about today. All right, what about today? Don't tell me you forgot. We're the top gun crew, right? So that rates us a special 12-hour pass, right? Right. What are we waiting for? The eyes of Texas are upon you all day long day. Oh, the eyes of Texas. Hey, how can anybody shave with all that racket? You should be standing at attention, sir, not shaving. When you hear those fine Texas words... Uh, back home in Texas? Yeah, uh, Ed, tell me something, will you? Sure, How did you ever tear yourself away from the Lone Star State? All those pretty Texas gals. Those oil derricks five miles tall. Those cactus plants with spikes big enough to use as tent poles. That big ranch your family owns. <laughs> I see you've been paying attention while I talk, old friend. Well, I'll tell you the secret. I decided I'd join the Army and see if there really is anything outside the Texas border. Well, then why bother to go into town today? Why not just sit on your radar set and think about Texas? Son, you got the wrong outlook on life. Us Texas boys have got to mingle with the other folks. That's what my pappy always says. Otherwise, people will get the notion that we're conceited about our home state, and that'd be terrible. That's why I'm going to take in a show and really see the town. Some mighty nice looking fillies here in Florida. You want to try your luck with me? No, Ed, not this trip. I think I'll head for the beach and just take it easy in all that high priced sunshine. Beach? Hey, you you've been reading travel posters. Didn't you get enough of a look at the beach out at the firing range? Oh, maybe so. But we were pretty busy with other things out there. Now this time I want to look down at the sand instead of up in the air. Hand me that towel. Yeah. The beach. Man, how dull can you get? An hour later, you're walking on the white sands of an Atlantic beach, Ken Walker. The fresh salt smell and the bright sunshine all around you. In swim trunks and with a towel slung over a shoulder, you stroll past vacationers, brown from the sun. Ken! Hey! Kenny Walker! Suddenly, you stop and look around. Ken! Hey! Up here! You look up. There on the top of a lifeguard's platform, a tall young man is waving at you. You shout back, Jimmy! Jimmy Stevens! What are you doing perched up there? Come on up! I'll explain! All right. Uh, just a second. Ah, there. What's the scoop? Friend of my dad's got me a job for the season of the lifeguard. Hey, what about you? I thought you were in the army. I am. I'm an anti-aircraft artillery. I'm here on a patch. Not much like the old days when we were keeping an eye on the swimmers at the YMCA camp, is it? No, I guess not. That beach down at the lake never looked like this, and <laughs> you can say that I get acres and acres. I don't wear these sunglasses just because of the sun. <laughs> I know what you mean. Hey, look, why don't I go grab a swim and we'll get together later? Where are you staying? With the other lifeguards over at the Reeves Hotel. Help! Help hey, girl out there, trouble. I'm just in time for the old rescue act. All right, let's go. <laughs> Together, you and Stevens race across the beach and hit the surf. Hey, Ken! See her! Uh, she's over! She's over here! Go ahead! Uh, up there, left! <laughs> Jimmy! That, that she is! I'll get her! <laughs> Take it in Just relax, you all right? Well, I'll take you in. All right, folks. All right, keep back. Everything's all right now. You're on the beach, miss. Feel okay? 
Are you Thanks. sure? Sure you're all right? Hey, 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 lifeguard. Hold her a minute. I'll get a shot. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Thanks, Max. I guess you can put me down now. Uh -huh. Thank you. Hey, miss, you're one of the New York models of Seabreeze Fashion Show, aren't you? That's right. I'm Cindy Taylor. Cindy Taylor. Oh, sure, you're one of those gold bathing suits. <laughs> Just like you are now. What's your name, Max? Uh, Walker. Sergeant Kenneth Walker. Oh, no. Did you say Sergeant? That's right. I'm in an anti-aircraft unit stationed near here. What are all the questions for? Oh, I'm sorry, Sergeant. I'm trying to explain it for I'm a photographer for the paper here. Cover the beach beat. I got a tip. There might be a story out here. Yeah, this will go pretty well with the city desk. Rescue story's always good. Then you're really not a, a lifeguard. Well, I was one, but that was a couple of years ago. Well, I'm afraid I'm the lifeguard for this section. But Ken and I are old friends. He got to you quicker than I did. Hey, Sarge, I've got an idea. Why don't you take Miss Taylor out to dinner so I can get some more shots? You know, you in uniform, her in evening dress. Will you make the morning edition with the whole thing? No, it's not up to me. How about it, Miss Taylor? Well, I... Uh, come on, Miss Taylor, give us a break. This will make a good story. Good publicity for you. And uh, I'm sure if I ask Miss Taylor... All Perry, right. Um, the charcoal room's the next room at seven. You've got a date. <laughs> Wonderful dinner. I haven't tasted a steak like that for months. Yeah, quite a dinner and quite a day. I still feel pretty silly about being photographed on the beach and just now in this restaurant. <laughs> I wonder if any newspaper would be crazy enough to use them. I guess I have the advantage. It's my job to get used to being photographed. Oh, I forgot you were a model. It's really not a very glamorous life. Uh, tell me, Ken, what made you decide on a, an army career? Oh, a lot of things, I guess. For one thing, I have an older brother in the Army. He's a captain now. Uh -huh. But it was more than that. I, I figure it's an important job, anti-aircraft. Any particular Army ambition? I've applied for admission to Nike school. Nike? What's that? Well, it's a ground-to-air missile. It's named after a goddess in a Greek legend. It's pretty complicated, but basically it's a rocket you fire at an attacking high-altitude bomber. It's got its own electronic control inside to steer it. And Nike travels so fast, it's practically impossible to dodge it. Now, there are Nike launching sites around the big target cities in the country now, you know. I should think you would have to go to school to learn to operate a rocket like that. Well, you sure do. Uh, the course can run as long as 32 weeks. Mm. They really pour on the electronics and math out there. I've got a good chance of making a top non-com rating, or maybe a warrant officer grade if I get appointed. Now, I hope it works out for you, Ken. You can seem to know what you want. Thanks. But I could go on all night. What about you, Cindy? All I know is that you're a New York model, and you look wonderful across the dinner table. You're good for a working girl's morale. Say that. Well, there's not much to tell, really. Besides, I, I'm not really from New York City. I come from Vermont, near Burlington. Oh? I won a high school beauty contest and decided I wanted a job as a model. I don't know how many pairs of shoes I wore out making the rounds of New York photographers. Are you very famous, Cindy? Famous? Mm. Fame is a matter of publicity. I've done fashion work and some television commercials, but I'm not what you'd call famous. Not yet, at any rate. Most of the time, you can hardly see me because of the advertising displays. <laughs> well, the public doesn't know what it's missing. I still say you're good for morale. <laughs> Ken, I, I, I've had a lovely time, and I hate to break this up, but... I've got a fashion show to do in the morning back at the ring. Well, can I walk you back to your hotel? I was hoping you'd ask me. I was hoping you'd say yes. Nice night. Mm, lovely. Cigarette? Okay. At my hotel. Will I see you again? Yes, if you'd like. I'd like. How about this weekend? If I can get a pass, I'll try to teach you how to swim. I really was a lifeguard uh, once. Listen, Ken, there's something I ought to tell you about today. Uh-oh, I knew this was too good to last. Another guy? No, nothing like that. Well, I, I, I guess it's not really very important. Not now, at any rate. Let's let it go set, shall we? Whatever you say, Cindy. Good night, Cindy. Good night, Cindy.
You are listening to the proudly we hail production of the Skyscrapers. And we will return for our second act in just one moment. You know, the United States Army is now offering you an outstanding opportunity to get free, highly specialized training through its Reserve for You training program. Here's how it works. You visit your local Army recruiting station, make your choice of over 100 fascinating training courses. If you qualify and vacancies exist, you'll receive a letter of acceptance guaranteeing you a seat in the course of your choice. That's before you enlist. Then you're all set. Through the Reserve for You program, you not only get the finest training in the world, but you'll have an excellent opportunity for a satisfying career. So at your earliest opportunity, get all the facts about the wonderful advantages of an Army career. Visit your local Army recruiting station and ask about the Reserve for You training program. And now the second act curtain of the proudly we hail production of the Sky Sweepers. Next morning at 0615, Sergeant Ken Walker you find yourself very much back in the anti-aircraft artillery. The day begins, reveille formation, morning chow, and an hour of artillery instruction in the latest techniques of anti-aircraft defense. Anti-aircraft artillery must be ready to move in a matter of minutes. From 0830 to 0930, all equipment assigned to each battery's motor section must be checked. The jeeps, the three-quarter ton trucks, the two and a half ton trucks, and the big powerful artillery tractors that are the prime movers for gun carriages and ammunition. More training. Every man on duty at a gun site must be skilled, not just in his own military occupational specialty, but in the jobs of all other members of the gun crew as well. In the afternoon, there'll be more artillery training, tracking missions, loading and firing practice. But right now, it's mess time. And time for an artilleryman to relax. That's just what you're doing when your buddy, Sergeant Ed Evans, comes over to your table. Well, here's the boy hero. Hero? What are you spouting off about? What's behind your back, Junior? Oh, just this morning's paper. I just thought you might be interested in seeing yourself in the middle of page one. What? Hey, give me that. There it is. Page one. Blonde model rescued by Army Sergeant at Beach. There you are, coming out of the water carrying it. Oh, boy, you really picked a nice one. See? It says her name is Cindy Taylor. And there you are again in a restaurant with her. Well, what do you know? Me, I go to town. I wait in line to see a movie I saw last month. I try to date a cute redhead before I realize she's waiting for her husband and three kids. <laughs> Almost missed the last bus back to the base. Do I get in the paper? No. <laughs> well, I told you to come to the beach with me. That's just what I mean, the beach. You pick the most unlikely place in town and wind up with this living doll just because she can't, she can't swim. You get a fancy dinner and you picture in the paper. How can I ever face my radar scope after that? <laughs> Finally, the weekend arrives. And with it, a pass for you, Sergeant Ken Walker. Shoe shine, fresh shave, uniform pressed, you enter the lobby of the Reefs Hotel on your way to your date with Cindy Taylor. Under your arm is the small green box from the florist with a corsage. In your mind, there's a picture of light blonde hair, green eyes, and the kind of figure that stops traffic. You walk to the house phones, Ken, and you pick one up. Uh, Miss Taylor, please. Hello? Hi, this is Ken. You ready for a swimming lesson? I certainly am. You're right on time. Well, who wouldn't be? Let me fix my lipstick. Won't be a moment. I'll meet you in the lobby. Five minutes. No more. I'll make it in three, okay? That's the deal. Bye. You sit down, Ken. And you try to read a magazine, but you find you're looking at your watch. But you look up as you see a well-tailored, tan stranger coming your way. Excuse me, you're Ken Walker, aren't you, Sergeant Ken Walker? Now, that's right. Well, my name's Miller, Maury Miller. I'm head of Miller Associates Publicity. I recognize you from that page one photo in the paper. Oh, I guess everybody in town has seen it. The guys in my outfit haven't stopped kidding me yet. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Listen, I just wanted to tell you, Ken, how grateful we are for helping to make our little stunt such a big success. Well, it's nothing, really. I... Stunt? Bit on the beach, you know, you rescuing Cindy. She's a model in the Sea Breeze fashion show, you know. We handle Sea Breeze. A great publicity break for them as well as for her. They're one of my biggest accounts. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Miller. Uh, let me get something straight. But that rescue business, Cindy, uh, Miss Taylor, 
It was all false? Well, sure. Cindy used to be captain of her swimming team in school. She's as much at home in the water as out of it. And look, Sergeant, I thought she told you all about it. No, uh, that's something uh, she didn't tell me. A publicity stunt. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm causing any trouble. I certainly well, didn't That's mean... all right. Forget it. Are you leaving? Yes. Oh, do me a favor, will you, Mr. Miller? Well, sure, uh, anything. I'll give her these, will you? She ought to be here any moment. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, flowers? Yeah, an orchid. If I'd known, I'd have made it water lilies. Someone here. That uh, Sergeant E. Horace? Yes, have you seen him? I'm afraid I did. He left. Left? Why? I guess I talked out of turn, Cindy. I thought he knew Laurie, all about it. Laurie, you didn't tell him that the rescue stunt was a put up job, did you? Yeah, I thought he already knew. I'm sorry, Cindy. Oh, I was going to tell him myself tonight. I didn't have the nerve to tell him before, somehow. Yeah, they're all arranged with the lifeguards. That's why I tipped off the press. How could you know he'd get there first? Yes. How could I know? In the next few weeks, you concentrate on your job as a gun sergeant, Ken Walker, and you try to forget Cindy Taylor. You chalk it up to experience. There are plenty of other girls. You tell yourself. But somehow it doesn't sound very convincing, even from you. Then, one afternoon, you get a letter with a New York postmark. Shame that we made you look foolish. It's certainly not the way I would have wanted it. Hey, Ken, Ken. Well, what's this? This? Oh, nothing. Just a letter from my sister. Your sister wouldn't be a blonde named Cindy, would she? Whatever gave you that idea? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, pal. I thought you'd gotten over her. Sure, I did. It's just family mail. Good. Well, boy, shine up your shoes a bit and straighten your tie. The captain wants to see us over at Battery Headquarters. Why? What's up? I don't know. I know a good way to find out. How? Oh. The captain wants to see us, so we'll go see the captain and let him tell us. That is, man. Walker, you and Evans both applied for transfer to Nike school a while back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I think I've got some good news for you. You both got excellent records. I recommend you, and you've both been accepted. You'll be shipping out of here in a few days, as soon as your orders are ready. Oh, that's great, okay. sir. Thank you. I must admit, I'll be sorry to lose you two. Been a fine job here, and you won't be too easy to replace. But I'm glad to see that you're going to get missile training. There's a big job to be done there, so lots of luck, Doctor. Thanks That's very much, sir. And uh, one thing more. Evans? Uh, sir? You'll be glad to know you're going to the school at Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss, Texas, sir? That's right. Well, that's fine, sir. It'll give me a chance to show Sergeant Walker around. Sometimes I get the feeling that he doesn't believe all the things I've been telling him about Texas. <laughs> Hear the orders. Day after tomorrow, we shove off. Fine, I'm all set. I wrote my pappy we were due to come out to Texas, and he's promised us a barbecue out at our place first pass we get. Good deal. Yeah, I could use one right now. You sound hungry. I am hungry. I'd like to tie into a nice thick steak with a baked potato, big green salad, apple pie with ice. All oh, right, cut it out. It's an hour till chow time. But you could use a steak, right? Right. Well, fine. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go to the beach tonight and celebrate. I know a restaurant where the steak is this steak. Enough. Lead me to it. Well, I didn't know you meant the charcoal room. Best steaks in town. Anything wrong with it? No, no, I suppose not. Well, you've never been here before, have you? Once. Just once. Oh, oh, yeah, I remember. Well, let's not talk about it, okay? Roger. Hey, uh, what time is it? Uh, exactly 7.25. Oh, really? Well, excuse me a minute. Uh, I'll be right back. i got to make a phone call. Yeah, I'll order you something long and tall. What? Cindy. 
You know. What are you doing here? I flew down last night. As soon as I got the telegram. What telegram? The one Ed sent. Ed? What is all this? Ed wired me that you were being transferred to the nursing school at Fort Smith. Oh, he did, huh? Well, Ed is pretty handy with a telegraph blank. I wanted to tell you myself how happy I am they accepted you. I know how much you wanted it. Pretty nice of you, Cindy. But you certainly didn't have to come down here to do it in person. Well, I didn't want to write. I wasn't sure that you got my last letter. You never answered. Oh, I got it all right. Cindy, I I'm sorry. I was carrying a chip on my shoulder. I know. And I don't blame you. If you want the truth, I'm tickled silly you're here. I even forgive old Ed for putting his big Texas nose in my business. Hey, what about your modeling job? I told Maury Miller I'd rather wear a wedding dress than a bikini. And I hopped the next place. You got anyone in mind? Well, I wouldn't want to commit myself. And you wouldn't by any chance... I'd like to spend the honeymoon in Texas, would you? It's the best offer I've had all day, Sergeant. Oh, Ken, darling. <clears throat> Did I hear somebody mention Texas? Ed, I ought to wrap a gun barrel around you and neck. You can't. It wouldn't be fair. No, why not? You might at least wait until I've had a chance to kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I suppose all of us at one time or another have seen the principle of strength through unity demonstrated by a handful of sticks. Singly, they can be broken very easily, but when bound together, ah, well, then it's practically impossible to break them. And so it is with our America. Working together as a team, we can be certain that our democratic way of life will never be broken. One of the most important members of democracy's team is our United States Army. A highly spirited organization that offers unequal opportunities to modern young men and women. Today, the Army has a new career program in operation, one that permits you to choose your own course of training in the skill that best suits your aptitudes and interests. So we kind of suggest you find out about it real soon. How do you do that? Go down to your local United States Army recruiting station and talk it over with the real friendly folks down there. Remember, fellas, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. And this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>